Town Zoning Board of Appeals. This meeting is being held live and also via video conferencing in accordance with the Town Board's enactment of Local Law Number 14 of 2022, adopted on May 24, 2022. Our next meeting and those following will be held in person here at Town Hall and will also continue to allow for remote participation. So we ask you to continually check the town's website for updates and any new information. If you wish to view tonight's live meeting only, please do not join the Zoom meeting and instead go to the town's website. With that, I'd ask that you join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, for those of you who are here with us tonight, in case of an emergency evacuation, please exit through the rear doors of this room to one of the staircases across the hall and continue downstairs and out through the main entrance. Please do not attempt to use the elevators during an emergency evacuation. In case of a medical emergency, the automatic external defibrillator and first aid kit are both located in the hallway of, on this floor opposite the elevator. Restrooms are located across the hall. We will be starting this meeting with the public hearings. We have applicants and members of the public here with us live and also standing by via Zoom webinar, which is being moderated by CTV. <coughs> Tonight, we also have board member Helen Burgess participating remotely. CTV will mute the speakers on Zoom until it is their time to give testimony before the board. Please be patient. If you find that you are having difficulties accessing the hearings, please visit the town clerk's meeting portal and click on the instructions link. A reminder that applicants, agents, and members of the public speaking, other than attorneys, will be sworn in, will state their address for the record, and will offer their testimony as it relates to the application before the board. We have very few items that are being adjourned tonight on the agenda, so we ask members of the public who speak to keep their comments limited to three minutes. So you can give verbal comments for up to three minutes, and then you could be able to uh, give a, a written submission if you want to give us additional information or uh, make additional comments. Unless otherwise stated at the end of each hearing, all of these applications will, will remain open for written comments for all purposes until a date to be announced after the hearing. Those comments can be addressed to the board secretary, Candace, and sent via email, mail, and or dropped off at town hall. Uh, before I do the minutes, I just want to mention a, a few other things, uh, which is so a couple of other things. If you have cell phones, you're here in person, and you have your cell phones on, you can do us a favor and silence them or turn them off because they interfere with our recording equipment. In addition, if you are inclined to speak to one another in the audience uh, when you're not uh, speaking to us, and just wait, waiting for application to be heard. If you can go in the hallway to speak rather than speaking in the auditorium, because that also interferes with our recording equipment. And with that, I would ask for a motion to approve uh, the minutes of our last meeting. So moved. Second. Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Um, uh, Mr. Macedonio. Aye. Chair votes aye. Minutes are approved. And now on to adjournments. Okay. We do have a couple of adjournments this evening. I am six on the agenda, which is Dune Road Holding Court. Then before Dune Road in the East Court. I'm going to move to adjourn that to our 9.15 meeting. Second. Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Um, Ms. Kern. Aye. Um, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Macedonia. Aye. Chair votes aye. Item 7 on the agenda, Blessing Fields, LLC, 163 West Montauk Highway in Hampton Bay is on move to adjourn that to our August 18th meeting. Second. Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Macedonio. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Chair votes aye. Okay. Decision calendar, Jonathan Martin. I move to reopen this to accept written submissions. Second. Um, Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Macedonia. Aye. Chair votes aye. Aye. Uh, close. Make a move. Motion to close uh, with the determination later this evening. Second. All in favor. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed. Okay. Glover LLC. 
They move to reopen to accept written submissions. Second. Uh, Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Macedonio. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Vosai, reopen. Okay, now I'll move to close with a determination later this evening. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The following decisions are going to be put off to our July 21st meeting. Um, Ryan Nivakov. Uh, 192 Hampton Bay's Realty LLC. Janet Zimmerman, Adios Holding. Nicholas and Luz Cardaraz, and 1240 Ocean LLC. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, then the following decisions. will be put off to our August 4th meeting. Lee Skolnick, Bell Patel, and Xavier Dowd de Hillen. Sorry about that, man. Just those are the two. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. All right. With that being done, we're going to go back to the item one on the agenda on the new applications. It's Cloverleaf Realty Inc., two Montauk Highway and Watermelon. Applicant request relief from the following provisions of the town code. One, town code 330-205A1, general provisions wall signs. One, to allow a 25.8 square foot sign to be located on the south wall of the building facing the south parking lot where only a wall sign facing a public street frontage for each business operating within the building containing such wall is allowed to to only excuse me to allow a 44.6 square foot sign to be located on the east wall of the building facing the east parking lot where only a wall sign facing a public street frontage for each business operating within the building containing such wall sign is allowed to attachment 330-9 schedule of permitted signs to allow two wall-mounted signs to face a public street, north wall facing Montauk Highway, where a maximum of one sign is permitted to wit, sign on roof and canopy. And three, town code 330-205C2, general provisions to allow a door sign that exceeds the maximal, maximum allowable 10% of the glass coverage area of the door to which it is painted or affixed to wit, 16%, or a non-conforming lot in any other relief necessary. The board has jurisdiction. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. John Anzalone for Harris Beach PLLC, 333 Earl Ovenson Boulevard, Suite 901, Uniondale, New York, 11553, attorneys for the applicant. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to make this presentation to you tonight. Uh, here with respect to Wild Cornell's uh, application for sign variance approvals in connection with its medical office building located at 2 Montauk Highway and Waterbill at the southeast corner of Flying Point Road and Montauk Highway. Uh, full name of the, of the medical operating uh, building is uh, New York Presbyterian Wild Cornell Medicine. That's because it is a uh, joint uh, partnership between those two uh, health organizations which have formed one common health network. Uh, services offered at the property include primary care services, including family medicine, same day availability for urgent care, uh, health, uh, health issues, management of chronic care issues, as well as reproductive medicine for men and women. Uh, prior to tonight's hearing on June 30th, uh, Wild Cornell submitted revised plans to the town building department with respect to the door sign. The door sign was reduced to less than 10%, which uh, actually voids the sign permit application itself because it's permitted as of right without a permit. Uh, so we are uh, drawing that request uh, on the record and would hope and would like the record to reflect that. Um, also, we had a conversation with Marge. Uh, the canopy sign, while noted as a variance, was actually granted, and actually the permit was issued. I have a copy of the permit that I can submit to the board at this time. Uh, I also have some correspondence from uh, Ms. Riley, to the extent she was uh, provided to this board, saying that she was going to amend her uh, report to this board to delete the canopy sign. Which one is that? That's two wall-mounted Yes. Which, where does so three would be taken out, right? East, but is it the north? The canopy east? sign faces uh, Montauk Highway, so that would be facing north. The north sign is taken out. Uh, four. 
As a matter of housekeeping, we submitted the affidavits of mailing and posting. Uh, at this time, uh, we also submitted at the beginning of this hearing uh, the precedent and other documents we'll be relying on in connection with this application. Uh, to put this application in context, the property is in uh, roughly the center of a plus or minus 1,200-foot uh, long stretch of a commercial development along the southerly and northerly portions of Montauk Highway in the area that is generally bounded by the east by agricultural uses and single-family homes and to the west by uh, Southampton Meadows residential development and the single-family residence behind the Hamptons Gynecology and Obstetrics, Obstetrics building. To the north across Montauk Highway is patio.com furniture store, and beyond that are additional commercial uses along Flying Point Road, some of which have signs for facing their parking lots. The property is abutted to the south by a multi-tenant commercial building that was developed in conjunction with the subject property and was designed to share the parking lot. In December of last year, the Town Architectural Review Board approval was received with respect to the signs before you today, as well as the signs that have been installed at the property, as that board found that the design of the signs was in general conformance with others in the well-established commercial note along uh, Watermill and the village of Southampton border. As previously noted, the existing wall signs on the north and west sides of the building face motorists uh, traveling eastbound on Montswalk Highway and southbound on Southampton Bypass, which are two of the three uh, approaches to the medical center that have a high traffic volume. The property presently does not have a ground sign. While one has been proposed at one time by the landlord, the applicant has advised me that the lettering is a few inches high and not illuminated. For that reason, it would not be clearly visible for motorists traveling westbound on Montauk Highway, even if it's constructed. Uh, the applicant is proposing the wall sign facing its easterly parking lot for the purpose of making the use suitably visible for patients traveling the 40 mile per hour speed limit on Montauk Highway so its patients have enough time to recognize the use, enter the southern westbound lane of Montauk Highway, and safely make the left turn movement necessary to enter the site at what is a high traffic intersection. The other signs face the shared parking lot with the multi-tenanted commercial building to the south. The storefront signs that will ultimately exist at that building will directly face Walkernell's parcel instead of Montauk Highway just because of the nature of how that facility was designed. For that reason, a sign in that area would be consistent with the overall design of the two parcels, which is a unique condition in the area. The signs are otherwise fully compliant with the town code, including maximum size requirements. Uh, the applicant also notes that this board has granted similar variances in the past. Uh, for wall signs facing parking lots, uh, particularly for 2209 Montauk Highway, Bridgehampton, 1547 County Route 39, Southampton, 721 Flanders Road in Flanders, and 729 Southampton Bypass and Watermill. Copies of all the decisions were submitted into the record today. At this time, the board so desires, I will go through the five factors for variance relief as they relate to the property, much of which I have already covered in my testimony and which I have submitted in writing to this board at the start of the hearing. If not, I... If you can just summarize it. Sure. That would be great. <laughs> can do. I don't know how long the, the submission uh, is. If it was what you just gave us, it doesn't get too long, but we, we will read it, I promise. Okay. So it's, uh, the, well, you know, the variance does not produce an impact on the adjacent property neighborhood because all the neighboring developments are commercial. Uh, the signs have been found to be similar in nature, uh, basically by the Board of Architectural Review Board of this town. Uh, the variance has been signs which are compliant in their overall size. Uh, the variance is not substantial because the relief is limited to a, printing a wall sign on the east wall facing vehicles approaching from the, uh, the east along Montauk Highway and permitting a wall sign on the south facing vehicles uh, approaching the property from Flying Point Road to the south. Uh, approximate to the Montauk Highway, uh, the, I should approximate to the site, Montauk Highway is a four-lane street uh, with two lanes in each direction. The terminus of Southampton Bypass is a five-lane roadway inclusive of a le dedicated left turn lane a left and straight lane that is used by patrons for the medical facility, and a dedicated right turn lane, all southbound, um, as long as two northbound lanes. Uh, vehicles traveling on the Amatak Highway approximately the site travel approximately 40 miles an hour, and they need sufficient time to recognize the site, slow down, and make the correct turn into the property, particularly a left turn, which is what signs are really talking about. Um, yeah, I've already noted the variances are similar to prior grants by this board. Uh, the benefit could be achieved, again, by an east-west ground sign if we had a sign like, say, the Ford dealership does or the Audi dealership does or patio.com does. We really could have enough visibility of the site to avoid the need for the variance. The problem is that the applicant's property is developed in conjunction with the neighboring property to the south. The applicant can't install a ground sign. The property owner has not installed the ground sign. Uh, and if there was a ground sign ever installed, it will actually be for the applicant's use and the three uses that are going to be located to the south. 
Uh, so the sign will actually be fairly small in terms of its area with respect to the, uh, how it advertises Wild Cornell's use. But if, so is it, you said two different things. Sure. Is a ground sign permitted there? A ground sign would be permitted there, yes, but it's not, uh, none has been installed and uh, we are not aware if they're actually proceeding with any end. Regardless, it's not going to effectively advertise the use of Wild Cornell's medicine. Uh, well, Cornell's use, because the sign will be split between four different uses. Uh, the lettering will be small and will not be uh, really internally illuminated. It will be externally illuminated. Uh, respectfully, compliant signage uh, does create a bit of a safety hazard because you need vehicles to recognize the site when they're coming from the eastbound to know to get into the uh, southern lane on Montauk Highway to make the left turn in there. You don't want cars moving at the last second of that intersection. It's not safe that the section is, is highly congested, particularly now in the summer. Uh, further, the architect designed the signage to be as compliant with the town code as possible. The variances will not have an adverse impact on the environment because the signs were designed in harmony with the other commercial uses in the area. Further, the property does not butt any residences and is surrounded by commercial uses on all sides. While the application variance is uh, self-created, the applicant notes that sign release is required for the orderly safe an effective uh, advertisement of the use of the property for motorists, and the uh, well, essentially I've already testified to the why that's necessary. We can also provide you with a photograph of uh, the existing conditions from the eastbound uh, that show the conditions in the winter and in the summer, uh, and show you how the sign is at the front of the building is actually blocked by foliage and really not visible from the eastbound if this board would so like. Okay. Um, so I know you, th there were some changes that were, that were made and there was some relief that was, has been withdrawn. Um, of the relief that remains, uh, my initial, uh, comment as one board member, as it relates to sign applications, um, is that I want to see what the planning board has to say, whether, whether they're, a, 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 refers to them, uh, for, uh, for their, that's what we normally do. Well, it depends. I mean, yeah. We only refer to the planning board if there's a, if there's a master sign plan. Yeah. Which is there at well, Anthony? Uh, I don't believe there's a master sign plan. There's not. Yeah. Um, and is, are there COs issued for these buildings? Yes, there's COs, so it's ARB. Okay. So, so, so the ARB is, pretty, yeah. Pretty much it's just us. Well, yeah, the, the, ARB the ARB actually hears instead of the planning board, and we before the ARB in December. Okay. Is it anticipated they're going to put a street sign up at some point? Uh, I can ask Mr. Tim Siebert if he knows he's the... Uh, okay. Uh, I'd have to, I have yes, to, I have to swear in. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, so if you can just state your name and address for the record, please. Sure, Tim Siebert. I'm the Chief Administrative Officer for Wild Medicine, 16333 16th Avenue, Whitestone, New York. And you swear to tell, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. And you need to get by the microphone, because otherwise we're not going to. Yeah. Okay. Sure, Siebert, S-E-I, B's and boy, E-R-T. Okay. So, so yeah, as far as the, the monument signage, I... I don't even know if that's going to happen. That's not even on the table as far as we're concerned at this point. If the landlord decides to do it, great, if that's passable. But um, that's not not even in the cards for us at this point. So so do I need to talk a little bit about the operations issue to help? No? Okay. Well, well, well what I just also kind of we got into the, you know, what the planning board was going to weigh in, which they're not. And without the planning board weighing in, you know, my, you know from my perspective, I, I encourage when it comes to sign applications, uh, uh, applicants to try to do what they can to uh, be in the spirit of what the sign ordinance says. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily to the letter, that is, if, if you need reasonable relief, we, we, uh, I think we're willing to listen about that. But overall, we, you know, we, you know, we, we want uh, applicants, whenever possible, on the one hand, to, com to, to comply as much as possible with the sign ordinance, and at the same time, well, we want your business to be successful. So, so we, we, we want to make We'd sure like that, that as well. Right. Yeah, right. so we, we want to make sure that there's going to be, an, you know, enough, uh, and which may sometime, sometimes would, would necessitate variance relief in order for people to know that you're there. Right. Um, so it's kind of a bit of a balance there, but sometimes we'll have, you know, sign applications that are very different than what the, what the sign ordinance is, and I will often encourage your applicants to see what can be done to modify the application. So maybe we can just talk about of those items that are that remain that haven't been withdrawn, uh, you know, kind of how they came about and the, and the specific need, need for each of them. Sure. So so basically it's exactly what what we said. The the patients are stressed out because they're saying once they do get into the practice 
know where you, to go. We don't know where to go. And then when you get into the parking lot, Nemo has a sign, Organic Edge has a sign, and we don't have a sign. So that with elimination, they figure out where to go. Okay. But, you know, we're doing a lot of advertising. We're here for a year. We really are committed to the, the community. Mm -hmm. And I just, I'm, I just want to put up simple signage that, to me, is very subtle um, and, and nothing like some of the ones in the neighborhood. So, uh, you know, I'm just... Yeah. The, the other thing that gets a little bit confusing about this is there are a lot of pre-existing non-conforming signs. Mm -hmm that have been or are, or are being amortized. Right. In other words, they're, they're sure. legal right now, but they're yep. losing their status. Yep. Yep. And so it, so sometimes we'll have, well, well, you know, there are three other signs, you know, down the road uh, that, that exist that are similar to what we, what we propose, but it may be that those signs may be on their way out right. uh, because of whatever the circumstances are. But in any case, uh, you know, I just kind of wanted to give you a, my, you know, kind of g general perspective, and this is not unique to this application in particular. Uh, as to what I encourage applicants to do. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you for your comments. Uh, I had a question. You said that you were compliant with uh, certain aspects of the sign codes. What were those aspects? Uh, that would be height, uh, size of the sign. Uh, we had ARB approval of the design of the sign. Uh, the only thing we're not compliant with is uh, the signage are facing the parking lots instead of facing just the road location lots. correct so it's the height the color you know it's oh, that single stuff, color yeah okay. okay yeah okay. so just facing the parking lot as opposed to facing the street yes and i can actually uh, i'll submit a photograph uh right now uh showing basically where the signs would be facing uh eastbound on montauk highway And I'm presuming that the sign being located facing the parking lot will also be visible from the road? That's the purpose of it, yes. Okay. That is no, it would serve no other real purpose if it was just facing a parking lot. Sure. If you look at the sign that uh, the pictures we just sent, uh, submitted, as you're coming down eastbound, it's blocked by the front of the building. First of all, it's really not visible even as you drive down the road. But even beyond that, there's existing tree that actually really blocks the building. And it really blocks the front of the building particularly. And you actually have a fairly, very good, actually, view of the side of the building from Montauk Highway. And that's the purpose of that sign. Yeah, this is, this is kind of a unique development uh, for us out here. We don't have a lot of uh, repeat building mm -hmm. what, you know, that require this type of uh, identification. And this is a unique intersection also. It's yes. very busy, it's crowded, everybody is trying to like scoot in and out. It's very problematic. So uh, I appreciate that you're trying to come up with something that's gonna lessen that. Yeah, and the average daily traffic on Montauk Highway in the area is over 25,000. It's also that high on uh, Southampton Bypass. I'm okay with this. Yeah, I'm okay with this request. And so cool, so. Yeah. I am as well, so. Okay, looks like you're, you're good. Yeah, looks like you're there. <laughs> okay. That's it. Uh, I guess any, any, we're here for you to answer any other questions this board has. Otherwise, like, that concludes our presentation. Okay, well, and I'm Very good. Gonna, yes, and I want to see if there's anyone here. Uh, so is there anyone, I'll first guess for the, in the audience, is there anyone here in the audience who would like to be heard in connection with the application of Cloverleaf Realty Corp? This is for property located at, um, looks like, to Montauk to, Highway, to Montauk Highway water, water mill. Uh, if you'd like to be heard, uh, you can come on up. And you can either go to, the, I think actually it's better if you go to the podium because our sound system is a little <laughs> uh, tricky with the, with the uh, combination Zoom meeting. Okay. Okay, so let's have to swear you in unless you're an attorney. <clears throat> I'm not. Okay, if you can state your name and address. Isidore Mayrock 100 Flying Point, water mill. New York. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Whole truth. Okay. You can uh, give us your comments. But I want to just mention to council that this property does abut uh, residential property, uh, contrary to his statement. Um, I'm going to read a statement here that's been signed by several residents on Flying Point that oppose any more signage here. Okay. Do you have the names of those residents? Yes, I do. Okay. And it's uh, signed, signed by the residents. Okay. A uh, fine point road in the intersection of 27 is the beginning of a residential neighborhood. What was a green four acres has become an assemblage of small office buildings. The town, developers, and residents spent several years fine-tuning a project 
that would please all. And I want to thank uh, Claire Shea, who I worked with personally on this project to make it uh, acceptable to all. The development is complete. And the one concern we have is with this building signage. The three signs on the medical building and on Nemo Tile, my question is, are they town compliant? Uh, and I just want to point out that I have a picture here where if the town requires it to be the same color, one color, the signs are two colors. So uh, that's, that's, that's an issue, it, hopefully. But I'd like to know if it's town compliant, all the signs. Uh, the village of Southampton and the town of East Hampton, or the village of Southampton and the town of East Hampton have guidelines for limiting signage and how they are illuminated. What we now have at this medical building and at Nemo Tile are extraordinarily large, bright signs not fitting as the entryway to a residential neighborhood. It looks like Times Square, and I encourage you to go there. And there are still buildings without tenant signs because they are vacant. If you leave it up to the tenants, they will overdo the size, number of signs, the light illumination, and the cohesiveness of the development. Now the medical building wants to add two more signs to the existing three for a total of five signs. The building is small and visible uh, as it is right straight up front at the corner of 27 Flying Point. How many signs do they really need? Is this a, really a billboard for Columbia Presbyterian? Uh, do we not know that they are located there? Do they need a sign for the roof so that late helicopters will see their building? Normally the developer would be required to approve sign locations, size, and graphics. Developer guidelines and approval would make for a cohesive look and avoid a variance at this time. There is no uh, landlord approval, it's a hodgepodge. So what we have is a beautiful development that the planning board did, and now we have a hodgepodge of signs. When we say a hodgepodge, we have an application that is at a specific sign to specific locations. Right. It may be that when tenants come in, they may have requests for, for, for other, other signage. If they can't comply with the town, the, the, the zoning code, right, then they have to come Typically to in a development, and I am a developer, that the landlord has requirements so that it all looks cohesive. You don't have all different sizes, shapes, colors. If, if you want to have a, 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 you know, a nice development. Uh, so, and I will tell you that I developed a project in Wayne Scott, a 20,000 square foot building, I believe it's maybe 5,000 foot. I was only allowed, and I was happy to have just one sign on Montauk Highway, a very small with gooseneck lamps, and one sign in the rear. They're looking for five signs. It's absurd. And I'd like to show you, you know, a picture is worth a thousand yeah. words. A couple of other things. Yeah. Uh, are you an adjacent property owner? Do you uh, next door? Two doors down. And, and the people who signed this, this letter, are they adjacent property owners? Yes. And I'll tell you that I only passed by on my bicycles, saw the sign. I, uh, I didn't have time to get, you know, 10 or 20 signatures. I could easily do that. Okay. Well, and you'll have an opportunity to do that if you want to. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, if you want to submit the, you know, the letter with, yeah. the, with the names of, of uh, the yeah. property. Who should I submit it to? Me. Okay. Does it have your name on it? Because I didn't catch how to spell it. Yeah. Okay. I'd like one for everyone. If you have one. Yeah, but you're going to have time because we will be left open for written submissions to right. submit any additional... Can I show you just briefly the pictures of what we're talking about? Or, you know, that, I mean, it's two colors allowed Three. Three. Okay. And you need to go on by the microphone so right. otherwise we, we don't get you. So I just wanted to show you that on Flying Point, yeah. you know, they're saying they're not sure which building it is. So actually... Here's the sign, not a, not a great yeah. picture here. Yeah. And I might talk on doing it this way with it, with the screen is it, okay. It, but I think, no. yeah. I think the yeah, point I, is I, that I, I, there's, yeah. there's signage all over to yeah. want more signs is yeah. absurd. Well, I would suggest that, that what you showed us on the screen, right. to submit them to us in writing. All right. Okay. I will. Uh, that would be great. I will. All right. But I, Any questions for me? Not at this time. But I, I get the sense you're favorable to more signs. We have to consider what you had to say, and we have to consider what the applicant's uh, council uh, has Sir, I heard one, one trustee say he's 
acceptable the more signed it. It's okay with you. Yeah, I hear you. That's... I, I take what you expect me to say, but I, I okay, take a well, decision based upon what I'm reading. Okay, well, you know, it's does go. I suggest you go there tonight and uh, take a we're look. We're going to be here tonight. I don't think we're going to be going there tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. familiar with the area. I've Good. driven past it many, many times. Right, right. What is the size of the building? Just curious. Anyone know? The attorney will ask the question of the attorney. Yeah. But your, your, comment, your okay. comments don't go unnoticed, okay. so thank you. Right. I think the aesthetic of the area is, is very important to the residents of the town of uh, Okay, all right, thank you for your comments. Okay, before, I just want to ask if there's anybody else. Is there anyone, uh, well, is there anyone else who's here who would like to be here in connection with the application of Clover Realty, Clover Leaf Realty Court? Is there anyone who's uh, waiting to be heard on Zoom in connection with Clover, the, the application of Clover Leaf Realty Corp? This is for two Montauk Highway and Watermill. If you're waiting to be heard on Zoom, this would be the time to let us know by raising your hand. No hands. No hands. Okay. John, if you want to come back up. So I guess there was a question about the uh, size, size of the building. The size of the building, and then if you want to respond. Sure. To the it. size of the building is 6,500 square feet. Uh, with respect to his comment that we are budding residents, the property does actually is separate and has a separate tax lot and actually has cross access easements with the property to the south. And the property to the south, which is where Nemo Tile is, abuts residences. Not Quiler Cornell's property. It's a separate legal state property. It's under a separate deed, has separate cross access agreements to them, and has a cross access agreement to, uh, to the building to the north. Uh, not north, east. Uh, with respect to his comments regarding signage, I we just respectfully disagree. We've, it's just, uh, I, I don't really want to belabor the point because it's point-counterpoint uh, with him with respect to the signage. I will say with respect to the design, we have A or B approval in the Town Architectural Review Board did go through the sign. We went through each sign, particularly Daniel Hahn, who's with us as well, who designed the sign. And we discussed, it with, in relative to all the other commercial signs along Montauk Highway and Flying Point Road, one of the Blatchy Southampton bypass primary. And they went through it and they said that the signs were consistent with them. There's other signs in the area that have uh, logos for such Ford, Audi, uh, medical uses in the area as well. Uh, so the signs were found to be consistent with the code as written with respect to its design and the colors and, and shapes and things like that. But, but location and, and like it facing the, the parking lot. So the ARB reviewed all three, every sign, including the ones yeah. before you. And they, they were fine with the design of the signs. They don't, obviously, they are ultimately... The signs are all that and facing the parking lot are your jurisdiction, not theirs. They just only they only look at it for the design. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I think I pretty much asked if there's anyone to be uh, who wanted to be heard. Uh, so keep it is yours. Okay. Well, I'm going to make a motion to close. We may open for written submissions to July 22. And um, the determination on 8-4. Second. Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Um, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Macedonia. Aye. Joe Votai. Thank you for your comments. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Okay, item two on the agenda is Madeline Feldman and David Albert, 24 White Birch Trail in East Quag, Suffolk County Tax Map, 900-290-3-64. Applicant requests relief from the following provisions of the town code. One for the proposed attached garage. 330-11, residential district stable of dimensional regulations for accessory distance from street front yard setback of 32.5 feet where 50 feet is required from the uh, easterly property line, White Birch Trail. And for an accessory distance from street front yard setback of 32.5 feet where 50 feet is required from the Westley property line, Shinnecock Avenue. And 330-7060, D, placement of accessory buildings, structures, and uses in all districts, and 330-83 C yards to allow the proposed garage to be located within the required minimum side yard of the principal building. Two for the proposed swimming pool, 330-11 for an accessory distance 
um, street, front yard setback, uh, plus or minus 37 feet, where 50 feet is required from the easterly property line, White Birch Trail, and for an accessory distance from street, front yard setback of 34 feet, where 50 feet is required from the westerly property line, Shinnecock Avenue. And three, for a proposed covered porch, 330-11, for a Principal front yard setback of 32 feet, where 60 yeah. feet is required on a non-conforming lot, and any other relief necessary. Board has jurisdiction. Good evening. Susan. I just have to swear you in. So what's your attorneys? Can you just state your names and addresses? Sal Lionel, uh, 28 Rogers Lane, Remsenburg. And you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the yes. truth. Yes. Okay. Natalie. Your address. Oh yes, 60 yeah. Sutton Place, South, New York City. And do you swear to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay. Can you tell us about the application? Yes. Just, uh, before you start, I wanted to let you know that these are your microphones, these small uh, black triangles. So if you could kind of address them and speak clearly. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because we want to get you on. Uh, yeah. And also, they're very sensitive, so if any pieces hit them, it makes a lot of noise. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so this property is in an R20 zoning district. Uh, there's a house on it. It's and, it, and the lot is pre-existing non-conforming. The lot has 16,000 square feet where 20,000 is court required. The property has 160 feet of road frontage uh, and it's only 100 feet deep. Uh, there are two roads abutting this piece of property which is causing the problem. The property contains an existing two-story home with a full basement. There's a shed in one corner of the property. Uh, the, prop the house was granted a variance back in 1984 to construct the home. Uh, we're proposing to construct an accessory swing pool and a detached garage on the south side of the property. And of course, again, the hardship is that there are two streets abutting the piece of property. Uh, because the property is 100 feet deep and there's a 50 foot setback for an accessory, there's zero room to build any kind of accessory on the property. Um, let's see. So the accessory I sought is for a detached garage from Shinnecock Avenue and White Birch Lane. Uh, we're, we're looking for reduce the setback from 50 feet to 32.5. This is a 35% reduction of the required setback. The relief sought for the swimming pool is from Shinnecock Avenue and White Birch Lane from 50 feet to 34 feet, and this is a 32% reduction of the required setback. The owner would like to enclose the rear uh, porch with the rear deck to have an airlock before going into the house. Um, the rear deck is 32 feet from the rear property line, requiring a 47% reduction in the rear yard setback. And we're proposing to remove the one accessory that's there in a uh, shed. Okay, so that's basically it. I brought drawings, I got surveys, I got pictures. Okay. Um, so we do have a note just to start out with from the building department, a very short note. This is from our uh, Gerhauser, our principal building inspector. Um, the comment was, the survey shall be revised to indicate the setback from the southeast corner of the swimming pool to the east of the property line, White Birch Trail. That was done. That, that, that was already done. Uh, anyway, if it was already done, that's fine. If not, uh, we would ask that you... Uh, I have those with me. Okay. Or did you have revised surveys with you now, or are they already yeah. submitted? I have them. Is, that the one, is this the one we have already? No. Um, it must be a new not one. sure if the, I'll go get the ones that have the setback that they request. Okay. Yeah, I mean the four season. Yeah. Gotta have it. Can you submit them to our turn? Mm -hmm. measurements I had uh, I couldn't locate on the survey. <coughs> so we'll see if the revised survey has some both lines. Yeah, I had some problems. Put the originals in the file. Put the originals with that? They go to me. Oh. It's oh. Yeah. And you can get them oh, to me. <laughs> to me. 
I give you two originals and photocopies. This is the updated one, which has the setback to the swimming pool from the corner of White Birch Trail, 34.1 feet. So I have been looking on the prior one, and maybe I just missed it, uh, for the principal rear yard setback of 32 feet, where 60 feet is required for the proposed covered porch. It's on there. Uh, okay. If you look at the word proposed porch to is the it? right of it, it says 32, 32. feet. Okay, right good. As yeah. long, long as it's there. Yes, sir. And, 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 and then the other one was, oh, I see, it's been, it's been corrected because there was one measurement where it was, it was 30, let me see, and the other one, right, what I did, yeah, it was 34. Yeah, I was a little bit confused with those pool, the measurement of 34 feet. I had a question mark as to whether it should be 37 feet. With the one on the left? Yeah, on the we have a setback in terms of the notice, setback of plus or minus 37 feet, where 50 feet is required for the easterly property line, White Birch Trail, for the swimming pool. White Birch Trail, so here. Yeah. 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 As long as we have it there. But if, but, 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 but I, I have one measurement of 37 feet. I just want to make sure it's all on there. Yeah, I mean, that's the applicant's job is <laughs> right, to clarify so yeah, yeah. the record. Let's just so go through it one that? more time since I'm going to have to deal yep. with this. Let's go yep. through it carefully. Yep. With each, the new each, survey, each we want to make would you sure. point out each one so we have, because mm -hmm. we know exactly where they are? This yep. is the setbacks for each item? Yeah. Yep. Yep. We'll start with the porch at the rear of the residence. Got that. We're looking to uh, enclose a wood platform with a roof. Uh, that structure is 32 feet off the property line. Okay. We just want to make sure it's on the survey. Yep, got yep. it. Okay, next. And we're proposing to build a uh, 32 by 16 swimming pool mm -hmm. centered in the property, 34 feet from Shinnecock and 34 feet from the rear property line and 34.1 feet from White Birch Trail. Mm -hmm. And then we're proposing... Okay. Yep. Right. And then we're proposing to build a one-story garage mm -hmm. uh, 32.5 feet from Shinnecock and 32.5 feet from White Birch. Got it. Yeah. And 11 feet from the property line. And 11 feet is not a is, requirement. I understand. 10 I is all it's I just wanted to see. Okay. We're that doing is. that because of pyramid. We're not looking for any other mm -hmm. relief. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no pyramid relief? Mm -hmm. No, no pyramid. No pyramid relief. Okay. No side yard relief. No lot coverage. Everything conforms up. Okay. 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 Thank you. That was helpful. Okay. Thank you. Have you heard from any of your neighbors? I, I ran into two neighbors, well, two neighbors in the last two days. Okay. And they were very excited about it. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Had something over there, so go Maybe on they the hmm? street to the Maybe other. They okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. okay. All right. Um, any questions of members of the board? No. Yep. Is, is there anyone, I'm first going to ask, is there anyone here uh, uh, in the room who uh, uh, has, uh, who would like to be heard in connection with the application of Feldman and Albert? This is for property located at um, 24 White Birch Trail in East Palm. <coughs> Doesn't look like there's anyone. Is there anyone who is be, waiting to be heard on Zoom in connection with the application of Feldman and Albert for uh, property located at 24 White Birch Trail in East Quag. If you're waiting to be heard on Zoom, this would be the time to let us know by raising your hand. No hands. No hands. Well, I have to say, it's centered on the property. I, you know, it, it is a reasonable distance from adjacent properties, so I, I don't see uh, it having a negative impact. Um, so, so I'm okay with it. Um, so, Susan, it is yours. Okay, so um, we're going to close the public hearing, and we're going to leave it open for written submissions um, to be submitted by July 22nd, with a decision on August 4th. I'm okay with it. Second. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Daly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Macedonio. Aye. Mr. Tribbetsai, thank you both for being here. Thank, thank you. Good luck. Take care. Thank you.
Item three on the agenda is Jesse Getling, 145 Newtown Road in Hampton Bay, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-86-1-70.1. Applicant requests relief from Town Code 330-11, Residence District Table of Dimensional Regulations for a rear yard setback at 23.7 feet, where 60 feet is required to legalize enclosed rear entrance to cellar on a non-conforming lot and any other relief necessary. The board has jurisdiction. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Rosemary Brown, 199 Mariner Drive, Southampton, for the applicant, Jesse Gatling. I have to share a little bit of history, but I'll be brief. So I represented Jesse about two years ago when he purchased the property. And he came to me about a year ago and he said, I need help. I said, what do you need? He said, I don't have a CO. I said, of course you do. I would never let you buy a house without a CO. Okay. <laughs> so I don't have the file. It was 20 years ago. So I did my research. I pulled what I could. I visited the building department. Um, I found two COs. They're in your application. The one from 1958. Um, it says residence big script residence, but then it says addition on it. So, okay, that's not the one we're looking for. Um, there's one from 1968 for a one family dwelling with attached two car garage. Again, in little print, it says addition. Um, we also have a variance from 1965, um, yet no CO. So we go to the building department with an application for a pre-existing certificate of occupancy. Mike Rizzola comes out, does the inspection, everything looks good. Um, he does some research. He writes me an email on November 9th and says, I don't think the back addition was built prior to zoning, and I don't think it's covered by any of those um, COs you have. I have um, his email right here. Um, he thinks that the portion of the pro of, of the addict of the building, um, there's a portion of the building that was um, in the back, beyond the fireplace, that he thinks, based on prior zoning and aerial photography, that was never CO and not racist. He thinks it was built sometime around 1984. So here we are. Were there, were there aerials or um, sur surveys in the file that, that helped him make that determination? I, he had, he had aerials. He showed me aerials. One aerial that I looked at with him that was prior to 1984 it looked like it was there this addition. Mm -hmm. Then the next one, it wasn't there. Sometimes it's not clear. In, in, in you know, um, I have, and you have this in your file, but I marked it up. This is part of a ZBA application from 1965. Mm -hmm. It shows the depth of the building for 72 feet. Mm -hmm. The depth of the building today is 70 feet. I don't know. I can't say for sure if it was there. I mean, I was just a little tot and not in the area um, at that time. But here we are. You know, I, I can't, I can't argue with it. Um, right. I thought it was easier to just come state my case. Yep. Um. So, I just want to say, so we're asking for a variance, rear yard from 60 to 23.7 feet for the addition. The board's granting the various variants will not cause any detriment or undesirable change to the neighborhood. It was built over 20 years ago. My client did not build this, and it was possibly built over 40 years ago. Given the fact that this is a large property with very little lot coverage, it's not substantial. Coupled with the fact that many of the surrounding properties have variances as well, granting this variance would not cause an adverse effect. While the applicant had to pay two times the fee, for the application, he did not build it without a permit. He inherited the problem, not of his making. Um, I urge the board to grant the variance based on those facts. Okay. So, when we have a 
little mystery like this one, um, all we can do is work off the information we have. So, uh, aerial photographs, surveys, other, you know, like looking at the various files from 1965, which is the year I was, I was born, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but also, if there was anyone you know, going back who would, would be willing to sign affidavits as to what was there at different times, that's a, a, a kind of, a, in my view, a, a fallback, separate and apart from the, the you know, survey um, or an aerial photograph, which generally is better evidence. Um, so um, the question is whether we have enough Arcadi um, in the file at this point. Um, and, and also, for, for your benefit, whether there's something else that you want to submit, or maybe this is it, this is all of your work, this is everything you can find. Well, I have enough for what, for anything the variance? I mean, she's not, she's not su suggesting that it's pre-existing. No, I, I know, I know. What would be the alternative to rip, take out the... To take, out, take, to out take the it entrance, out. Take out the entrance. Well, it's not... Is it an entrance to the basement? It isn't just the entrance to the basement. And here, here lies the problem. It's so confusing. Every time you you ask something, you get a different answer. Um, when I represented him 20 years ago, I mean, I'm sure I went to the building department. I'm sure I collected all everything that was out there and determined that fine. we're fine. This this property has a CO. I mean, it had two COs. I mean, granted, you know, if you look at them. Um, it does say addition, we had a variance. You know, but based on the the length of the building, everything I felt like it was legitimate. Like we don't need we didn't get updated COs twenty years ago. What was the last CO issued? Well actually we have a CO that was just issued, um, a pre existing CO for a single family, one family dwelling, attached garage, fireplace, as per survey dated 11, 11, 20. 20. Um, so it looks like, based on this CO, that we're legit and we don't even need to be here. But based on the email from Mike Rizzola, November 9th, 2021, we, that part of the building was never permitted. So I assume Tom went out and inspected, saw the property, saw that there, and didn't make an issue of it? No, he did mm -hmm. make an issue, but then they issued me a CO. So. Anyway. so can I ask? A I can't. <laughs> if you add the twenty-two point two feet with the seven point seven, that's like you know, that's like thirty plus the twenty-three point seven. So you'd still be, um, you know, fifty-three point seven feet when you needed sixty. Correct. Yes. Okay. So even if you were to take it down, you still are in, in violation of the setback. Yes. And the reason I mentioned before about you know, you know, the evidence is, yes, he's absolutely right. You're not claiming a pizza, so you're not alleging that. But maybe it was 20 years ago, maybe it was 40 years ago, and I was really honing in more on when do we think it went up. And it doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't matter that much. Um, yeah, it's obvious, obviously been there for a long time. Um, maybe back to 1965, most, if not all of that, has been, has been there. Um, we have no information as to who put it up. Or when, and it's you know possible. It's possible that most of it was there, uh, you know, right, right, right through the late fifties. It's just entirely possible. When did he purchase the property? Twenty years ago in August. It'll be twenty years. Have you heard from neighbors? Yeah, I and, haven't. And did he get a mortgage? I'm just uh, curious. Did he get a mortgage when he purchased yes. the property? Yes, of course. Right. So, yeah, so, and then we had two COs and a variance. Two COs and variance. <laughs> right, right. But but no one missed that little tiny print said for addition. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's comforting. Um, <laughs> um, so, I mean, if, unless there's any additional information you have for us, we're just going to have to make a determination uh, based on what we've got. Yep. Yeah, it's all I have. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, any other questions or members of the board? No. finger on it right now. I don't know if anyone else has it, but about uh, uh, rental, uh, improper rental okay. uh, going on in the property. And while I don't think that that's necessarily going to mm -hmm. take a role in this, I want you to know that that comment was stated. And um, he, 
you know, and advise him to, to yeah, be... Yeah, we are doing um, everything to clean up the property. Be and, smart and, and, yep. and be, you know, in compliance with the way that... Right, we the, can't get a rental permit with that, yeah. Yeah, I see. Yeah. If that's... Okay. Um, the, uh, the other things, we did get comments from uh, the building department. Have you seen these already? This is from Marjorie Riley. Um, I'll just read them into the record unless you've already seen Yes, them. I, I, I did read them. Did read them? We need permits okay. for the pergola, the fire pit. The, okay. Yeah. All the permits are in. Okay. okay. All right. They're all in. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Uh, next, is there anyone in the audience who's waiting to be heard in connection with the application of Gedling? This property located at 145 Newtown Road in Anthem Bay. If not, is there anyone on Zoom? was waiting to be heard in connection with the application of Getlang for one property located at 145 Newtown Road, Hampton Bays. Uh, <laughs> we lost that one. She if ran away from home. Yeah, if there's anyone who, who's waiting to be heard on Zoom, this will be the time to let us know by raising your hand. No hand. Okay. All right, if not, Bob, it is yours. Okay, I move to close. Hold open for written submissions to 722 and a decision on 84. Second. Uh, Mr. Macedonio. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Um, Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Joe, it's aye. I believe uh, Ms. Burgess is uh, not there at the moment. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Take care, rest. Okay. Item four on the agenda is Mark Caltabiano, 12 Lincliffe Road, in Hampton Bays, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-265-4-5. Apple can request a deter excuse me a determination at the subject parcel. Suffolk tax map 900-265-4-5 is held in single and separate ownership from all adjacent parcels and thus entitled to relief uh, to 330-115D and any other relief necessary. The court has jurisdiction. Good evening. I just have to swear you in unless like you're either you as an attorney. Good evening, folks. Okay. Uh, you can state your name and address. Mark Caltabiano, 12 Jitty Lane, Hampton Bays. And you just better tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth. I do. Okay. And, and Catherine Caltabiano, 12 Jitty Lane, Hampton Bays. And you just better tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth. Okay. Okay. You can tell us about the application. Just looking for uh, on the address right, 12 Lincliffe Road, for a uh, single and separate determination. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, so there was a single and separate um, abstract title submitted with the application. Um, the, uh, we have an aerial as well as the survey. Uh, it appears to be this property is vacant land, and then and I guess this, there is uh, there are adjacent uh, parcels that are improved. Um, I did have a question about the aerial. Uh, get to it. I ask you. Um, it does not look like there are, there are structures there. It looks like there are vehicles there. Yeah. Is it like a parking area? Uh, there's no vehicles yeah, now. We just purchased uh, that a few months ago. Okay. Previous, yeah. Uh, three pine trees and three uh, vehicles. Yeah. So <laughs> you can see, it, 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 the thing about these aerials is that yeah, the property line are, is often not clear in the aerials. So it may be that they're actually not on this property. But yeah. I just figured I'd ask about it. I was there today. I didn't see anything there. Okay. Nice and clear. A couple of rabbits and uh, red yeah. blackbirds. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a big white sign. Yeah. Yeah. And your sign, sign posted for the uh, notification for the neighbors, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, so there must have been a period of common ownership. I think I, when I reviewed the single and separate, I believe I found uh, at least one um, with the premises. Subject premises and then the premises. Uh, so get, it. Neighbors must be happy that you're there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? On the statement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One, one of the adjacent parcels. I, I and fire department and police department. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw yeah. yeah. a National Guard. Yeah. Oh, it became a hangout. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The um, military trucks and uh, just out of the norm type vehicles that were parked there for many years. So I don't um, think the neighbors enjoyed seeing that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's let me explain it a little bit more. When it comes to these kinds of applications, it's not uh, a, a, a variance, the variance term that we use. Uh, we have to go through an analysis that is based on case law as to whether there was an intention to merge this property with another property if there had been a period of time of common <coughs> and the lot was undersized. So um, 
So there appears to have been a period of common ownership at some point, and this lot is undersized and it's vacant. So uh, the question becomes, um, what, was there a separate deed for it, a separate tax rent member for just this lot? Um, or was it combined with, with, with one of the other parcels? Do you know? Yeah, I submitted tax map, separate tax bills for both properties going back. Okay. From the 80s, I can go further, but I wasn't sure exactly. How okay. many years you need us to go back, but then they're separate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, they, yeah, so they've been separate? Right, yeah. At least 100 years. Yeah. Tax. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so separate tax rent members, separate deeds. Um, and it does not appear based on. Um, you know, we, we can see that there were, were, were ever uh, you know, structures on the property that benefited uh, you know, the, uh, a property that may have merged with. So this parcel didn't benefit another parcel as far as we can tell, unless you can tell me otherwise, which you probably would. Uh, you wouldn't be telling me that because there's nothing there. I mean, it's, it's yeah. clearly vacant land. That's conforming with the other lots in the Seems area. Size, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. are yeah. a little yeah. bigger, some are that yeah. size, maybe a little smaller. I don't know yeah. sure. everybody's uh, lot size, but it seems to be the norm for that right. strip mm -hmm. of road. And sometimes uh, another thing that, that's helpful, but I don't think will be helpful here, is if uh, you had a mortgage on just this lot. Um, or there was a mortgage on the, the adjacent lot, which I don't think there would be a mortgage because it's vacant land. Um, There's no mortgage. No mortgage. Okay. We purchased the mortgage. Single except is names now. paying taxes and them build a house, do whatever they want there. Oh, wait a second. You said you it's moving. Right. <laughs> so you own both lots. Or just plant some fruit yeah, trees for now. Yeah, one in my name and one in his name because we just own right. them both. Okay. Okay. But there was a period of common ownership going back. Uh, okay. Katie, you would be the same. But not separate. since you've owned it. No, we only owned it. I did once upon a time. I don't remember. Really yeah. From, from yeah. the beginning, you have it as a separate name. Right, yeah. yeah. The, no, I definitely found a period of common ownership on one of them. Either adjacent lots? Yeah, 14 and 12. What do you mean? We purchased them both, yeah, at the same time. I think it was March we closed. Was it? Yeah. And then March or April, they were the same owner. Right, yeah. Okay. And you intend to keep them separate, you know? Yes. Correct, yeah. Yeah, I found the common ownership uh, from back in the 1980s, Samuel and Mary Elliston. Correct. Yeah, that's, Previous that's, that's where, yeah, that's where I found a, a period of common ownership. Right. Um, although it was a little confusing, the premises and more. Um, but in any case, that that's what, so what it is. if it was owned by one person, did you sub? I mean, how did you get it into two lots then? It was two, right? It was, it was always, always two. two. It had its own tax map, its own survey, oh, yeah. okay. everything yeah. separate. The it's just the town the merged town, it because yeah, the they didn't keep... recognize it as two separate. The but the town the, the, ta the town, one. the town saw that there was a period of common ownership. They, yeah. say they, they see the single separate abstract, okay. and they say, well, okay. bad, this has to be dealt yeah. with yeah. before we move forward. What do you think, Mike? I think this, uh, I... I, I'm okay with this request. So am I. Thank so am I. Thank you. Is there anybody else here that wants to Anybody want to contribute? Anybody? Okay, Ladies. so anyone who, 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 who would like to be heard in connection with the application of uh, Calpaviano for property located at 12 Lincliff Road in Hampton Bay. Sorry if I mispronounced it. Oh, perfect. You did a great job. Okay, okay. Thank um, you. No. Okay, is there anyone on Zoom who's waiting to be heard, who would like to be heard in connection with the application of Calta Piano uh, for 12, property located at 12 Lindcliffe Road in Hampton Bays? If you're waiting to be heard on Zoom, this would be the time to let us know by raising your hand. No hands. No hands. Okay. Well, yours, Mike. All righty, sure. Um, so we'll close this public hearing, leaving it open for written submissions until July 22nd and expect a determination mm -hmm. on August 4th. Anybody? Second. Second. I'm seconding. Okay. You, you, you just did. Okay. Uh, Ms. Daly. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Uh, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Uh, Mr. Macedonia. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Thank you both for being Thanks for coming. Thank you, folks. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. Under re-advertised applications. Item 5 on the agenda is 87 Forster Avenue, LLC, 87 Forster Avenue, Hampton Bay, subcounty tax map 900-374-2-6. We don't have jurisdiction, right? Yeah. No, you have to read it. Right? They re-react. I'm going to request relief from the following provisions of the town code for a proposed in-ground swimming pool. 330-34, business district's table of dimensional regulations for an accessory distance from street 
Set back front yard of 32 feet from Lighthouse Road, north property line where six, 60 feet is required, and accessory distance from street set back front yard of 50 feet from Forster Avenue, east property line where 60 feet is required. And two, 330 76D, placement of accessory buildings, structures, and uses in all districts, and 330 83C yards to allow the swimming pool to be located within the required front yard for the principal building and a non conforming lot and any other relief officer. Court has jurisdiction. Good evening. Um, you're here on behalf of the applicant? I am. I'm Carol Sullivan, okay. one of the members. Okay. Carol, Joe you? Wagner is here, who's the architect. Okay. Are you an attorney? I am not. You are not. Okay, so I just have to swear you both in. So we just want to be able to get you on the, the microphone, so if you can both. Yeah, I'm right. I figure I'll sit up here with okay. yeah. you. You can do that. I'm going to present. Fine. Okay. She's just going to give me permission to okay. present. Okay. You never know what I might do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's true. So you guys have a seat. You can both have a seat so we can get you on the... Yeah, you both sit here. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so you can uh, each state your names and addresses, please. Carol Sullivan, 30B Lighthouse Road, Hampton Bays, New York, 11946. Okay. Michelle Wagner Nevia, architect, 57 Rollstone Avenue, West Sayville, New York, 11796. And you, do you both dis swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? We, I do. I do. Okay. Thank you. You can tell us about the application. Um, yes. So, um, the oldest parts of this house were built in 1940, which predates most of the other homes in the area. The property is a very unusual, non-conforming lot. The property has road frontage on three sides, the west, mm -hmm. the north, and the east, and the house is placed on the south end of the lot, which leaves a very small rear yard and a very large front yard. Uh, we're trying to find a place to put a pool, a swimming pool. So because the front yard is, most of the property is front yard, uh, that's where we're proposing to put the pool. The property is a RWB. It's a very last lot at the north end of the RWB zone. Across the street to the north, there's a similar lot, which is 24 Lighthouse which also has three front yards and one side yard, no rear yard. And um, it, it's a wonky wiggle in the road at Lighthouse. I'm sure you're all familiar with the area. Um, so section 330-115 for the non-conforming lots only gives relief for side and rear yards for accessory structures for which this property would be 10 feet. But even with that 10 foot side yard, we still can't fit the pool on the south side of the house. Um, so the only place to put the pool is in the front yard. Um, trying to bring this into compliance as close as I can to the code, I used the guidance of the, um, the house would be allowed, it has an, it has an existing so, uh, front yard setback of 32 feet. Um, and by right, uh, under 330-115, uh, they would be allowed to put an addition on the house, maintaining that 32-foot setback, but instead of putting an addition on the house, we just want to put the pool. So we're proposing to keep the pool a 32-foot setback to Lighthouse Road, the front yard to the north, and a 50-foot front yard setback to Foster Avenue, which is to the west. And because also the property doesn't have a rear yard that you can hang out in, um, that 50-foot front yard to Foster Avenue would be used like a backyard, which is what 24 Lighthouse did across the street. They put a hedge around the pool, and they kind of use part of their front yard as their backyard because they have no choice. It's a very similar property. Um, this is an aerial. I'm sorry, I don't have five copies of this exhibit. Okay, you, you can give it to our attorney okay. and... Uh... And this is uh, an aerial which shows the boat yard across the street of Foster Avenue, um, which is the side which would be near the pool. There's no, no homeowners to be affected by the location of the pool. Mm -hmm. And also the placement of the pool in the front yard <laughs> gives more privacy to the only adjacent house, which is 25 Lighthouse which is a very small piece of property. Mm -hmm. um, 
it gives a lot more separation. This is also the survey for uh, 24 Lighthouse. Okay. That shows the pool in the front yard. Mm -hmm. uh, 24 Lighthouse is in R20 zone, and it's also a much larger piece of property. And the house that they built in 94 um, is pretty much conforming to the zoning code because they have more land to work with. They were able to get a 49-foot front yard setback for the pool. Probably 50 is required. Um, I don't even know if they ended up going for a variance for that. We push the pool as close as we could to the house. We don't want to excavate too close to the house foundation because in the area where we tuck the pool in, to this corner of the house, um, the foundations um, are only uh, like three feet below grade, and the, the pool might be a little deeper, so we don't want to undermine the, the footing. So um, You're all the way up there by Stabelt, so the marina? Uh, yeah, it's north of... Right across the street. Right. Yes. So oh, the boatyard yeah. across yeah. the street. <laughs> yeah, it's really a, a weird area. It's a highly non-conforming. The lots are all different sizes. The uses are all... I have no problem with this application. Yeah. Yeah, so. um, it's highly irregular. Uh, the construction of the pool is not going to have any adverse effects on the physical and environmental conditions in the neighborhood. We're going to put the bottom of the pool two feet above groundwater, like to coat, and also the backwash. <coughs> also be two feet above groundwater. Um, and this front yard setback is the minimum required to allow the owners to have the same enjoyment of their property as many of the other homes in the area that have a similar lot size and have room for a pool and strict enforcement of this code um, would be, um, it would be, well, I mean, to say arbitrary and capricious because there are a lot of facts that support the application and to deny it would, I mean, this is what the Board of Appeals is for. It's exactly for lots like this. I mean, three front yards and a side yard and a small side yard. And a very unusual shape lot. Very unusual. It's very unique. It's constrained. And, and so I don't really feel that, you know, there is a house across the street that is almost exactly the same shape, but it's a much larger lot, and it's in a different zone, which requires half the lot size. Yeah. You know, this is 40,000 square foot requirement. Theirs is only 20, and they're right across the street. Have we heard from any of the neighbors? Carol? Some of you can be heard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Susan, can I have those two written up then? <clears throat> Somebody's hands up. Yes, yes. Hold on a second. Okay, before, before we go to anybody else, um, any other questions or members of the board? No. Um, anyone from the public who's in, in, in the room with only one person here is waiting to be heard in connection with the application of, uh, this is 87 Forster LLC, or Forster Ave LLC, for 87 Forster Avenue in Hampton Bays. If not, if, is there anyone from the public who's waiting to be heard on Zoom in connection with the application of 87 Foster Ave LLC for 87 Foster Avenue in Hampton Bays? Yes, we have yes. a, we have a okay. few. Okay, good evening. I just have to swear you in unless you're an attorney. I am an attorney. This I'm is an attorney. Okay, you don't have to swear you in. Okay, Alex Kriegsman, 279 Main Street, Sag Harbor. I represent Oscar's Fishing Station, LLC. And we are an adjacent neighbor at 91 Foster Avenue. Okay. Very oh, yeah, good. Water. You're all the way down the end. I didn't, I didn't recognize you, Alex. You look different on Zoom. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm just asking for an adjour one adjournment to the next meeting to have an opportunity to review this and determine whether we want to support it or oppose it and just have the opportunity to be heard. What was the reason for your delay? Yeah. I, don't, I don't even have the application. The notice was posted, correct? Everybody yeah. got what yeah. they were supposed to get. This is the I know, but on the other hand, it's been re-advertised. Your, your client didn't get it the first time either? I think my client got it, but I, I just found out that this was on. I'm, I'm out of town, and I'm just asking for the opportunity to review it and comment on it. So, so in my, so from my perspective, the question is, you're going to have an opportunity to comment. The question is whether we need it to be a, 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 a adjournment of the hearing or a written, or a written submission. I think a written is sufficient. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. You'll have an opportunity to submit anything. You'll have an opportunity to review it and submit your comments. And that'll be reviewed if, by the board. It'll be reviewed by the board. Before a decision is made? Open. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You would have it until, uh, uh, right now, I know whose this is, but until uh, J July 22nd to send in a written submission. Is, is that enough time for you, Alex? 729 we could do. I mean, I, I would prefer to have the opportunity to address the board, but if you're not going to give me that opportunity, then uh, I, you know, I, I'll, let me ask again. Can can we please adjourn this so that I can have the opportunity to speak on it? Because I haven't even seen the application. I'm willing to give you to the 29th to submit your written comments. And if they're significant, we can reopen. I agree. I agree. This appears pretty clear cut um, at this point. And, well, and, and Alex, make your make your pitch that you'd like an opportunity to be heard in your written comments. Ask, make, make that request again. If there's any opposition, you may not even oppose it, correct? I may not oppose it. That's right. But it's not the same to, to submit something. I'm telling you, I haven't received it. And I, I don't think it's too much to ask to just hold this open to the next hearing. You're not willing to people that should have received it. If there's a substantial opposition, put that in there and then ask that it be held open for a public hearing. Well, well I, I, I couldn't hear. Someone was saying I wasn't supposed to have received it. I thought just neighboring. Did everybody get is, that? Is your client that, an that, adjacent that, property owner? You're, you're yes. Right? The marina. Yes. Yeah. Adjacent property owner. Yes. Hodgkin's fishing station is an adjacent property owner. Is that what you're saying? Correct. It's a house in front of this. Well, maybe, maybe you should come out from Sag Harbor and take a good look yourself. Well, I, I don't know why you're getting antagonistic with me. I'm just asking for an opportunity to speak. Antagonistic, sir. I just want it to sounded know. it sounded pretty antagonistic. Excuse me, you're making claims that you didn't get what you're supposed to get, and I don't I don't believe you're right. What, what you're telling me? I do have the application. Absolutely, I'm not telling you that. Okay, so so what you you're Questioning what I'm saying, telling, making some comment about me having to come out from Sag Harbor. I don't know what that has to do with anything. I've been I, I, to Oscar's fishing station. Have you I told you fishing? three times who I represent. Yes, still Oscar's fishing station. The question was, have you personally been there? Yes. Okay, I think we're going in a direction that's not productive. Well, hold, on, so, hold, on, hold, on, yes, hold on a second. Well, the, the, you from Alex's address? Yeah, no, his client. Your client. His well, what, what's what's the, the address of, of the your client? 91 Foster Avenue. Okay. We just want to make sure that they were given a notice. That's right, Jason. 91 Foster Avenue. And Mr. Grossman, I, if, if a board member doesn't know how to conduct himself professionally, I would ask you to reprimand him. Consider me reprimanded, okay, sir? No, not okay. Uh, Mr. Grossman? Do you, yeah. do you have a personal matter with this that you need to recuse yourself? Mr. Grossman? Mr. Grossman? Yes, Helen? I have no problem granting Mr. Kriegman the adjournment. As one attorney to another attorney, I think he, he's entitled to get his one adjournment. And... I have, I have, I personally have no problem with it, Mr. Greenman. Okay. Hold on a minute. We're confirming the. But I'm only one member of the board, Mr. Greenman. That's true. Thank you. And when would we adjourn it to the next meeting? We could adjourn it to the next meeting. Yes. With the 7-Eleven is on that night, I think, at the next meeting. That's only if we're going to have seats. Okay, it won't be. So that's so that the other alternative is to, is to adjourn it to the next, to the, next to the very meeting. next meeting, and he has to submit his written comments before the meeting. Before the meeting, it may be a week before the meeting, so that we can have an opportunity to review that. Do we want to do that? We have a, an opportunity for a rebuttal. A yes. Yes, we will. They didn't receive notice. Uh, hold on. The court has jurisdiction. Okay. So so, but what was was Alex's client? Uh, uh, one of the property owners that was given a mailing? No, no. Absolutely. Excuse no, me. No, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't supposed to. There's, there's a property in between the two. 
the subject property and his contract. Only adjacent properties get the notice. Can, can I just say that his yes. wife, Bobby or Katie's wife, who is the client, who is the owner of Oscars, received two for two different properties. The one that's on Lighthouse, as well as the one that is adjacent to Oscar's fishing station. Right. And you received it in, for two meetings. And I got back her, her written... Um, return receipt. Right. Yeah, return receipt. Same family members. Same family. 25 so, Lighthouse, which is the house next door. Right. right. And, and, and also also the property in back so right. there's there's oh, Oscar's I see. fishing oh, station so there's a fishing station but then the personal property owner is the same is related to the so it's, it's his a wife. lot of the stuff okay. is in the wife's family okay so they they got the notice okay. so she got the family notice. member yeah. Yeah. Uh, folks Carol, folks just clarify what, what Carol is saying what she's saying is that 87 87 Fort Worth is the subject property just to the south of it is 89 Fort which is owned by Bay Street Associates Inc um, on our GIS mailing list, that's the Gail or Katie that yes. she's referring to, yes. which was notified. Right. So whether they're related to the Oscars, I don't property. know, but it is. Yes. It's the wife of. There are two properties. It's that one on on mm -hmm. Lighthouse and the other one on Torres. So the one adjacent was notified. So so two right, right. So so uh, I understand. So really, the, the difference is in terms of what we're talking about is having <clears throat> it closed with a written submission versus having another date for you all to come back. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure. Um, uh, Helen just indicated that she wants uh, Alex to be given, uh, given an opportunity to appear in person. Alex has said he wants to be given, given an opportunity to appear in person. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure maybe uh, whether, I'm, whether there's been any change in terms of where we are. I feel if we do we that, we should just adjourn it to the next meeting mm -hmm. <clears throat> and not give him more than the next meeting. He has to get the material. And get written submissions of cards. <clears throat> and he has to submit. Although, any, although uh, for, any, for any public hearing, we're, we're going to have a written comment period after, after it's closed anyway. Right. All right. So I would definitely, I wouldn't, if I do, any, if I agree to anything, it would be for the next meeting. For the next meeting. Okay. Um, anybody else for the next meeting for, for, for Alex to be able to appear? So be it. That's fine. Okay. All right. All right, so so it sounds like you're going to be coming back. Uh, the next uh, date we have is, what is July 21st. Yeah, 14 days. July 21st. Does that work for you, Alex? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Okay. I'll be 76. Alex, do you anticipate any opposition? <laughs> well, maybe it'll be birthday. I don't know yet. I just want to review the application. I don't. I don't know yet if we're going to oppose it. Okay. Okay. And, and ladies, you can you. Thank you, Mr. Krigman. Thank you. You can appear via Zoom if okay. you would like. Yeah. I okay. think uh, I will try. I okay. All right. We'd like the pleasure of your company. <laughs> I'm okay. Okay. So, Helen, you're the lead, so why don't you make the motion? Well, I make okay. a motion. Yep. To adjourn this case till July 23rd. Okay. Sorry, what, July 21st. Yes. And we'll okay. do that. Okay, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Daly. Aye. Um, let me see. Uh, Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Macedonia. Aye. Jervo Sai, we'll see you all on July, on July 21st. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you all. Okay, thank you. Are we, are so we getting... Is anyone here for, is, is, yeah, are we, the Turtunian? Okay. Okay. Are we getting Turtunian again? Yeah. It sounds like that. Why would the fish station close it? Okay, uh, we'll call Uncle uh, Item 8 on the agenda, which is time on to Journey and 57 Station Road, in West Ham, Suffolk County Tax Map 900, 355 2 18.6. We, we called all three together, <laughs> yes. correct to begin with. Right. So I'll call out 9, which is Production Holdings LLC, 
and Tyrone Turcherny in 57 and 61 Station Road, West Hampton, Suffolk County Tax Man Plymouth, 900 355 2 18.6 and 18.7. And item 10 on the agenda, which is Production Holdings LLC, 61 Station Road, West Hampton, Suffolk County Tax Map, 900 355 2 18.7. Is anyone here on Zoom in connection with uh, those applications? No. Usually like Jim, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, it's Jim. Well, what do we do? I never had it. All right. Before. Where are we putting these? Well, we'll, 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 we'll second, call, second it call it until the end of the meeting. He says he's here. Okay. They're coming in there. Okay. Oh, I just want to type up I am here. That'd be nice too. It'd be nice to get this done. Yeah, it's been on 12 times already. Just, oh, oh, just since you've been here. No, I mean, I just. <laughs> three years old. I just counted these. No, I realize that we. Jim. Good evening. How are you all doing? Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, Jim. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so you thank you for uh, letting me in and presenting tonight. Uh, we've, we've been here several times. Um, one of the things that has been discussed over the last several meetings is getting the uh, planning board pre-app started up again. So I, I wanted to let you know that um, that I filed that application, refiled that application last week. So um, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't heard about any scheduling yet, but um, hopefully, uh, hopefully soon. Uh, so I think at some point you need to make a referral to them or a day to you. Uh, vice versa so that that that's uh, that's in the works uh, we've discussed all of the various different um, variances needed here uh, on a number of occasions the last time I was here you had asked me some specific questions about the uh, the concrete building uh, the accessory structure that's on 57 station road which is the western property uh, and what I did was uh, compared and contrasted that to the um, uh, shed that had originally been on the property and was removed as part of an earlier subdivision. Uh, the concrete building that is there now uh, is 865 square feet. Uh, it replaced a prior CO structure that was 964 square feet, so it, it got a little smaller. It didn't quite get to a conforming location, but it ceased being... Uh, uh, an encroaching structure across to the across the property uh, to the west. Uh, we also submitted some estimates relative to that building. One was to demolish the building, um, ju just to demolish the building, and that was a little over forty three thousand uh, dollars, and then uh, substantially more to actually construct a new accessory structure in a conforming location. Uh, those estimates were in the package that I provided. Um, uh, to Candace a couple of weeks back, I think. Um, and hopefully they made it into your files. Uh, the other bit of information you wanted some uh, detail on was the accessory apartment, proposed accessory apartment on 61 Station Road. Uh, and uh, we submitted an estimate uh, um, that is rather substantial for returning that from the accessory structure that it is now, an apartment, uh, a dwelling apartment uh, to the barn that was originally there that was uh, was CO'd. Uh, so I think those were the, the main items that you had uh, asked me to provide further detail on. So if there's any questions about that or any other aspect, I'd be happy to address it. Okay, well, I just want to see kind of where, where we go from here. Anthony, do you... Okay. All right, Jim, so I got your application where it's in the... <laughs> It's in our office. Um, you know, we have to go through uh, the the hearing again um, right. and the pre-app report. Um, we're we're going, you know, we're going to need a couple months just from the timing standpoint. You got to do the meeting, which is going to happen in let's see, July. That meet the hearing is going to happen in August. Um, I, if I were you, I would be. If, don't have anything else to discuss with the board until the planning board does its thing. Absolutely. Uh, second, your second meeting in September is probably your best bet. That would be fine with me. Okay. September 15th. Okay. All right. But before we do anything um, with with that, I just want to find out if there's anyone else 
was uh, was waiting to be heard on Zoom. It comes with this applica the three applications. This is the application of Mara Tertunian for 57 Station Road, uh, Production Holdings LLC for 61 Station Road. This is both from West Hampton, and uh, this the application of Tertunian and Production Holdings LLC for 57 and 61 Station Road in West Hampton. If there's anyone who's waiting to be heard be heard on Zoom in connection with uh, these three applications. This would be the time to let us know by raising your hand. No hand. Okay. Uh, Jim, can I ask you a question about the accessory apartment? Sure. It looks like it's bigger than the house that's on that same lot. Uh, Do you have um, percentages on that? I, I don't, but in between now and September 15th, I can say. Yeah, okay. Okay. It's a question that I just have. So. It's sure. Yeah, no, I'll, 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 su I'll submit that. Yeah. Okay. We advertised it for approximately 50%. So, I mean, yeah, he needs some numbers. Yeah, because it looks as big, if not bigger, to be honest. So, yeah, okay. you need to know that. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I will move that we uh, adjourn the app, the three applications to Toronto Trunian for 57 Station Road in West Hampton, uh, Production Holdings LLC for 61 Station Road in West Hampton, and Toronto Trunian and Production Holdings LLC for 57 and 61 Station Road in West Hampton for all purposes until our September 15th meeting. Second. Ms. Daly. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Tuthill. Aye. Ms. Macedonio. All right. Thanks so much for the update, Jim. Thanks, sure. Robert. Good to see you all. Thank you. Okay. Have a good rest of your night. Bye. Have a good summer. Thank you. <laughs> Anthony, is that date uh, is that date realistic or is that kind of hopeful? No, it's realistic only because I'm um, re-repeating. We have already did this once with the planning board. Got it. Um, it's just that it expired so long ago, we couldn't do anything, so we just got to redo it. That's all. I think sometimes we set dates. Not ever keep not ever stating that you have ever done this but we tend to set hopeful dates to try to be expedient on things yeah. and then we end up just you know sometimes not doing that. absolutely and, and we have to yeah, yeah we've got to be conscious of My, yeah. item 11 on the agenda is a modification request richard f stott 61 car road in hampton bay suffolk county tax map 900-268-2-31 on october 7 2021 by decision number d021112 this board granted relief for the following setback relief for a proposed covered porch setback relief for a proposed addition on the west side of the dwelling pyramid relief for a proposed roof renovation to the east side of the existing dwelling by letter dated may 16 2022 the applicant is requesting that said decision be modified to indicate a side yard setback of 9.4 feet instead of the 10.66 feet which was granted for the proposed addition on the west side of the dwelling. Is there any, anyone here on behalf of the applicant on Zoom? If you're waiting to be heard on Zoom, uh, if you could let us know by raising your hand. Richard is here, but he, he doesn't have access. Okay. Charlie? How, how can we help well, one him? One second, one second. Char Charlie's dealing with it right now. Take your time. Okay. Take your time. Would they miscalculate when they granted the other one? Yep. It was the wrong measure. I think he said that he could speak. But he couldn't see anything. Can you give and me perhaps, a can you give me a second, please? I think. I think you might be able to hear me now. We can hear you. Okay, great. Now Sorry. We like now we can we'll be able you. to see you, although you're in a little tiny box. Okay. <laughs> I maybe if I click. Okay. No, no. Don't do anything. Here we go. Start my video. Hold on a second. Don't do anything. Yep. 
Oh, yeah. Well, this is just going to be how it is. I don't know what that glitch was. If I could see you sometimes, I couldn't see you sometimes, and I never had the options I typically have on my Zoom screen, so I'm not sure what, what's up. Charlie, will fix it. There you go. There we go. Okay. Okay. So I just have to swear you in, so if you can state your name and address. Richard Stott, 61 Kyle Road, Hampton Bays, New York, 11946. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, if you could tell us about this uh, modification request. Yes. Um, I was trying to save time and money and didn't have this sort of reviewed by my surveyor. I'm the architect on the project, and it's my house. And when I designed this addition to the house, um, my house sits a little bit cockeyed on the property. It's not doesn't have parallel lines, so it's a little bit off. And the survey shifted underneath my my computer layers and i didn't notice that it had shifted so when it came time to calculate those dimensions um, i never noticed the shift and the variance was granted and when i went to complete my permit drawings i figured out that there was had been the shift and i knew it had to be corrected so wanted to do it sooner rather than later and take care of it okay i just need to retroactively say the board has jurisdiction Okay. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So basically, there was a measurement that was that was uh, in the decision that needs to be corrected. Correct. And and what is that measurement again? It was ten. The the variance was granted for ten point six six feet. I'm requesting nine point four. Okay. So basically, a little over a foot uh, a difference. Yes, sir. I wish that that 10 feet wasn't such a solid, you know, hard and fast rule, Richard, you know, frankly, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm keep teasing you. <laughs> um, sorry. Okay. Well, I can't imagine that that, that amount of relief is going to have an impact on the neighbors, but we'll see if there's anyone uh, who is going to be heard. Um, but before I do that, any other questions of, of, of Richard? No. Is there anyone who's waiting to be heard on Zoom? And by the way, the reason I'm just saying Zoom is because there isn't anybody in the auditorium other than us. And there's no one on Zoom. Yes, nobody, and nobody on Zoom. Okay. I, I a recommendation. Yes. Um, because it's an easy one, and normally we could just do the modification at the next meeting. Yeah. Um, there was a glitch with our advertisement on our end, and I think Candace explained it to Rick. So what we're recommending is to keep it open for testimony on 721, yep. just to make sure that everybody's covered. And then assuming nobody comes, we'll do a decision for 721. So you okay. just have to be available, Rick, on 721 in case anybody shows up. Okay. That's fine. The same night? Yep. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, I have the lead on the application. I'm going to move that we adjourn the application for all purposes on, until June 21st. Sorry. Uh, July. July 21st. Oh, I'm sorry. July 21st. Uh, yeah. Not next year, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, do we have a second? Okay, Ms. Daly. Aye. Uh, Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Aye. Uh, Mr. Macedonio. Aye. Mr. Dunhill. Aye. Joe Zai. Thank you so much, Richard. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you, and have a good weekend. Thanks. Thank you as well. I'm going to. Okay. Right. Okay. Maybe you're here for a particular decision? Okay. I think that. No, it's not being adjourned. Not being adjourned. Oh, it's just a decision. Okay. All right. Um, it's flying point of state. Ed. Flying point of state. Okay, LLC. Okay, very good. Okay, so I'll read that one first. Yeah. All right, so I have a... No, that's all right. For you. <laughs> okay, I have a decision in the, uh, on the application, uh, for the application of Flying Point Estate LLC. This is for property located at Suffolk County Tax Act number 900-132-322.1. This application is for property located at, nine, at 14 Flying Point Road, Watermill. Applicant uh, request variances in connection with a two-bus subdivision in order to preserve a historic structure initially proposed to be demolished. This propose, proposal was supported by both the Landmarks and Historic uh, Districts Board and the Planning Board. 
The pro this project, or the project, is a Type 1 action pursuant to CICRA and the Southampton Town Code. This board coordinated review, assumed lead agency, and adopted a negative declaration finding that the proposed activities would not result in any significant environmental impacts. This application passes the standard set forth in, New York, in the Town Code and New York State Town Law. This, therefore, this board grants the following. Relief from Town Code 330-167-J, specific types of variances, to grant a special use permit to allow a historically significant single-family dwelling to be relocated on the premises while a new single-family dwelling is constructed until such time that the proposed two-lot subdivision is approved. And two, relief from Town Code 330-11, Residential District's Table of Dimensional Regulations for Proposed Lot 1. One, a lot area of 27,557 square feet where 60,000 square feet is required. And two, a lot width of plus or minus 143 feet where 150 feet is required. Uh, I guess the, the actual measurement will be confirmed by the planning board. This board also grants the following relief for proposed lot one. One, town code 330-11 for the following. One, a, for a principal front yard setback of 60 feet where 80 feet is required, and a principal rear yard setback of 62 feet 8 inches where 100 feet is required for the relocated historically significant single family dwelling. Two, for an accessory side yard setback of 22 feet 4 inches where 30 feet is required for a proposed pool house. And three, for an accessory side yard setback of 24 feet 8 inches where 30 feet is required for a proposed detached garage. And for, for proposed lot two, one, relief from Town Code 330-11 for the following. One, a principal front yard setback of 60 feet where 80 feet is required, and a principal rear yard setback of 69 feet 4 inches where 100 feet is required for a proposed dwelling. Two, an accessory side yard and rear yard setback of 20 feet where 30 feet is required, and three, an accessory front yard setback of 72 feet 1 inch where 90 feet is required for a proposed 55 by 110 foot sunken and screened tennis court. Two, Town Code 330-76D, placement of accessory building structures and uses in all districts, and Town Code 330-83C, yards, to allow the proposed 55 by 110 sunken and screened tennis court to be located within the required front yard, and minimum and total side yard for the principal building. And Town Code 330-77D, place, placement of accessory building structures and uses in residence districts for a proposed rear yard coverage of 22.5 percent where a maximum of 20 percent is permitted these variances are granted for structures as shown on the site plan prepared by ryan t kesner last revised july 6 2022 and the plans and elevations prepared by same this decision is conditioned upon the following one the attic space in the existing dwelling remain remaining unfinished slash not habitable. Two, the designation of the existing dwelling by the town board as an historic landmark prior to the signature of the final subdivision map by the planning board. Three, the filing of a covenant on lot one prior to the signature of the final subdivision map by the planning board subject to form approval, uh, uh, approval or approved uh, by the town attorney's office stating that the dwelling has been designated a landmark, that the building shall not be demolished, removed or raised, and that any construction, repairs or renovations proposed to the, his to the dwelling must be reviewed and approved by the Southampton Town Landmarks and Historic Districts Board or its successor in interest, and four, any recommendations made by the LHDB in their report to the Town Board. Grant of the foregoing relief is subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired or may otherwise to ha have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises. Second. Second. Mr. Daly. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Uh, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Uh, Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Mr. Macedonio. Aye. Chair votes aye. Next, I have a determination in the matter of the application of Jonathan Martin. This is for property located at Suffolk County Tax Act number 931-166.7. This application is for property located at 37 Lake Drive, North Sea. The applicant here requests a variance for a proposed uh, pyramid encroachment for a proposed two-story dwelling. The premises is non-conforming with respect to lot width, is burdened by wetlands, and is located in an AE6 flood zone. This application passes the standards set forth in New York State Town Law and the Town Code. Therefore, this board grants relief from Town 
Excuse me, from Town Code 33084D, Pyramid Law, for a proposed encroachment in the amount of 4,261 cubic feet, 2,708 cubic feet on the southeast side of the property, and 1,552 1, square feet on the southwest side of the property, for a proposed two-story dwelling, as shown on the survey prepared by Robert Smith of Squires Holden, Weisenbacher, and Smith, last revised April 20th, 2022, and the plans and elevations prepared by Eric Peterson, architect, last dated January 24th, 2022. 2022. The grant of the foregoing relief is subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises, including compliance for all fences and walls. Second. Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Mr. Macedonio. Aye. Uh, Ms. Kern. Aye. Um, Ms. Burgess. No. Uh, Mr. Daly. No. Chair votes aye. Next, I have a determination on the matter of the application of Glover LLC. This is for property located at Suffolk County Tax Rent Number 9101111. This application is for property located at 374 West Neck Road, North C. The applicant here requests variances in connection with the proposed dwelling and swimming pool on, the non on a non-conforming lot. This application passes the standards set forth in New York State Town Law and the Town Code. Therefore, and for the reasons set forth as stated herein, this board grants the following relief. One, for a proposed dwelling. One, Town Code 330-115C, continuance, for a minimum requ required side yard setback of 10 feet where 15 feet was pre-existing. And two, Town Code 330-84D, pyramid height, for a total encroachment in the amount of 3,398 cubic feet, 2,828 cubic feet on the southeast side, and 870 cubic feet on the north side. Two, for the unroofed steps, 330-83C, yards, to allow the unroofed steps to be located within the minimum required side yard for the principal building. And three, for a proposed swimming pool, one, Town Code 33011, Residential District's Table of Dimensional Regulations for an accessory front yard setback of 12 feet, 12.4 feet from the north, northerly property line, West Neck Road, where 90 feet is required, and an accessory front yard setback of 51.7 feet from the westerly property line, West Neck Harbor where 90 feet is required. And two, 330-76D, placement of accessory buildings, structures, and uses in all districts, and town code 330-83C yards to allow the proposed swimming pool to be located within the required front yard. These variances are granted for structures as shown on the survey prepared by Stephen Borilski, last revised June 30th, 2022, floor plans and elevations slash pyramid diagrams prepared by John Joseph Condon, PE, dated April 16th, 2022. This decision is subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire, acquire for final approval of the subject premises. Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Macedonio. Aye. Ms. Daly. Aye. Chair votes aye. I next have a determination on the matter of the application of Donna McKinney. This is a property located at Suffolk County Tax Map Number 900-254-46. This application is for property located at 19 Sherwood Road, Hampton Bays. The applicant here requests variances in connection with the location of an existing legal garage uh, as it relates to a newly proposed addition to an existing dwelling. This application passes the standards set forth in New York State Town Law and the Town Code. Therefore, this board grants relief from Town Code 330 76D, placement of accessory buildings, structures, and uses in all districts, and Town Code 330 83C yards to allow an existing detached garage to be located within the required minimum and total side yard for the principal building as a result of a new addition to the rear of the existing dwelling. As shown in the survey prepared by John Minto, surveyor, last dated June 24, 2022. Granted the foregoing relief, the subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to require for final approval of the subject premises. Second. Ms. Kern. Aye. Uh, Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. Macedonio. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Chair votes aye. I next have a determination in the matter of the application of Dimex Realty. Uh, LP. This is for property located at Suffolk County Tax Rent Number 900-188-11.2. This application is for property located at 63 Newtown Road, Hampton Bays. The applicant here requests a variance to clarify expansions and additions on the premises as they relate to Town Code 331-67. This application passes the standards set forth in New York State Town Law and the Town Code. Therefore, this board grants relief from the Town 
from Town Code Section 331.16, extension, as it relates to Town Code 331.67 B1A, specific types of variances, to allow the expansion of a nonconforming use as follows, to permit the relocation of an existing barn and to allow the conversion of said barn into a cottage without cooking facilities, and two, to permit a proposed 2,943-square-foot second-story addition to an existing one-story frame residence for structures shown on the site plan prepared by Michael W. Minto, uh, LSPC, last dated June 22, 2022, and the architectural plans uh, prepared by Ed Wilsendorf, dated June 20, 2021. This decision is meant to clarify that, one, once these proposed additions are made, the premises has expanded 50% as permitted by the Southampton Town Code, and two, the existing two-story residence located along the western property line that is to be relocated and converted to a proposed cottage does not have and will not have cooking facilities without approval from this board. The granting of this relief is subject to su su the conditions of such of the permits as the applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Um, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Uh, Mr. Macedonio. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Chair votes aye. Uh, last one I have tonight is the Colonel's Way, uh, which is property located at Suffolk County Tax Rent Number 963.14.2. This application is for property located at 55 Fish Cove Road in North Sea. The applicant here requests variances for parking and pyramid height in connection with a proposed dwelling. The premises here is nonconforming, located in an AE6 flood zone, and is burdened by wetlands. At the Conservation Board's suggestion, the applicant proposes to locate parking on the lot across the street that is also owned by the applicant. This application passes the standards set forth in New York State Town Law and the Town Code. Therefore, this board grants relief from the following provisions of the Town Code for a proposed one-story dwelling. One, Town Code 33084D, pyramid height, for a proposed encroachment in the amount of 38.4 cubic feet on the east side of the property. And two, Town Code 33094, schedule of off-street parking space requirements for residential uses to allow zero parking spaces where a minimum of two spaces are required, as shown in the survey prepared by F. Michael Hammer, LSPC, last revised August 11, 2021, and the floor plan slash elevations and pyramid diagram prepared by David H. Sherwood, last day. Dated November 19, 2021. This decision is subject to such other conditions and premises applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises, including compliance with all conditions of the wetlands permit. Second. Um, Ms. Kern. Aye. Um, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Daly. Aye. Ms. Tuttle. Aye. Mr. Macedonia. Aye. Joe votes aye. Can you see, can you go back to page three and see if, if I included Bar Baranowski? Yeah, Baranowski yeah, was good. Missing. Like the top of page three, maybe it got cut off? It's that? here. Okay. It's here. I checked it. I'll read, I'll, read, I'll read it again. I'll read it again. No problem. I didn't read it. Okay. I, I, I believe you. Okay. I and Yeah. And, and actually now I remember. I don't remember reading it. Okay. So this is... <laughs> I checked it. I checked it and then I didn't, didn't read it. Okay. Good, good. All right. So I have one more decision on the application of the, on the application of Daniel Baranowski for property located at Seven County Tax Rent Member 977533.8. This application is for property located at 3 Hannes Court, North Sea. The applicant here requests variances in connection with a proposed sports court in order to preserve a grove of historic Norway spruce trees. This application passes the standards set forth in the New York State in New York State Town Law and the Town Code. Therefore, this board grants relief from the following provisions of the Town Code for a proposed sports court. One, 33011, Residential District's Table of Dimensional Regulations for an accessory front yard setback of 20.5 feet where 70 feet is required, and an accessory front yard setback of 10.5 feet where 20 feet is required. Two, Town Code 33076D, Placement of Accessory Building Structures and Uses in All Districts, and Town Town Code 33083C yards to allow the sports court to be located within the required front yard and the minimum side yard for the principal building, as shown in the survey prepared by Kenneth H. Beckman, LS, last dated September 28, 2021. This decision is subject to such other conditions and permits applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises, including compliance with all clearing restrictions slash revegetation. Second. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Tidehill. Aye. Mr. Macedonio. Aye. Ms. Daly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Do you have one? I have a question, Adam. Okay. On the Foster Avenue, when the attorney comes next, 
If in fact he has no objections, mm -hmm. is it possible for us to do a decision that night? Well, I suppose it's, 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 it's possible. But I mean, our custom is, since the Zoom meetings, to give a period of public comment. So, but that is. But, for, for anyone who wants to, well, right. it's 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 all up right. to the board. I and mean, nothing prohibits the board from doing it okay. if we wanted to. Okay. Well, it, it, yeah, it wouldn't be written. Though. Yeah, it wouldn't be written. It would be too presumptuous to put it on for that night. But you could you could then say we don't need to have another long public comment period. We could have a decision ready for the first meeting in August. Okay. okay. Herb used to do at our Christmas meetings. Um, the Christmas miracles. Was because otherwise we would have had we would have had the modification on for this the next meeting. Yeah. Because we did make there was a glitch, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Right. okay. Yeah. But that's why I was yeah. thinking because of the modifications there. Right. Okay. Well he said it was just like giving someone a big Christmas present. He, he loved it. But but the but the thing about doing it is that you know you're writing the decision before you even really hear the public comments. So yeah, right. that, I see. I understand. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are closed. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Candace. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Anthony.